acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which we meet and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'm just going to pass right over to Rash, who's going to show us how to cook split lentil curry. Uh, but as Daryl said, today we'll be doing a split lentil curry, um, and it's a specific kind of um, lentil that we'll be working on. Uh, but what I wanted to, I was just chatting with Daryl as well before we started up, um, one of the themes around today's um, class, or rather dish, was more that, you know, sometimes it's winter and it's really cold and you kind of don't want to run out, you don't want to get takeaway because it's unhealthy and you don't want to run out to buy um, stuff to cook. Um, today's recipe is something that you can make entirely from the pantry, right? So it's not something that you have to have fresh. Um, it's a great way to use up anything that might be in the fridge that you might have handy, like, you know, carrots, potatoes, I'll be throwing spinach in, um, but only if you have it. If you don't, um, I'll go through all the ingredients and I'll show you how to make something um, it's like the lazy man's curry, basically, because you don't want to step out of the house. So that's what we'll do. I'll actually start by talking about the lentil a little bit, because I think that's really important. There's so many uh, lentils out there, and I'm not going to try and talk about all of them because I'll bore you. But I will talk about what we we're going to be playing with today. So um, we're actually so this is um, so we're doing a split lentil curry, and the lentil we're using is is mung beans. So or um, I'm sure some of you have seen these before. They use in all kinds of even in Asian desserts sometimes because uh, it's got a sweetness to it. But in India we use them a lot in cooking, but we don't use it in this form. And typically. Um, uh, Indian cooking has a lot of split lentils because split lentils cook faster. So it's about removing that green husk and doing away with some of that stuff and splitting it open. What you usually get is these guys over here. So it's a really small lentil, as you can see, not a very big one because we're starting with a pretty small lentil to begin with. So once it's split open, it's nice and yellow, bright and quicker to cook. So with that, I'll quickly show you, um, I actually soaked um, these lentils so you can tell the difference now from something that's been soaked versus something that is actually quite raw. So you can see how much bigger they are just from having been soaked. They've pretty much almost, I'd say more than doubled in size. Um, I have soaked them. So I have 250 grams of, of the, the split lentils. Um, split mung dal is what it's called. Uh, there's so many names for it. That's what I'm calling it today. Um, and so uh, this has been soaking. I mean, you can soak just for a couple of hours and you'd be fine. I've had it sitting there overnight. It's sitting in vegetable stock. So 250 grams of mung, uh, beans, uh, uh, not mung, split mung dal, and uh, half a liter of vegetable stock. And you can see most of that stock's gone straight into the lentils. So there's not very much stock left. We have another half a liter that we'll be putting it in the pan to actually make the lentil along with a whole host of other things. But this is the star of our show today, basically. So this is um, a, a very, very popular uh, lentil with uh, split lentil with kids. I ate this um, when I was growing up. Mom would always make it like a porridge called kitchidi. Um, I'm just going to do a basic curry today. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, a major throwback to my childhood, which is why I'm excited to be able to, to do this um, with you guys today the fire on on him going and what I'll do this time instead of trying to talk through all the ingredients up front is I'll talk through them as I put them in the pot so I'm going to go first with um, some oil into it's going to actually move the camera a little bit so that you guys can see clearly that's much better there we go hopefully that's coming through perfectly um, on on the camera. Um, so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna get this heated up and typically this sort of a dal is made in a pressure cooker just to really quickly to kind of get it cooked with some turmeric. And then, then it, a tharka is added. Tharka is basically just kind of a, a mixture of oil and spices fried together to add flavor to the curry. We're gonna do a topsy-turvy <laughs> version. I'm gonna start with the tharka in here. So I'm going to fry up some spices and, and get a couple things going. And then I'm going to actually throw the dal into it and then cook the dal in it and then kind of add more things on top as we go. So it's, it's kind of, again, the, the lazy man's way, right? <laughs> a lazy woman's way rather, because I don't want to do too much, uh, too much washing at the end. And I, and I don't want to do a lot of um, uh, fussing about with, uh, with the dishes um, and also all the ingredients just all goes in the pot. So I've got oil, that's probably about half a tablespoon to one tablespoon. You just want enough oil to fry up the spices. One tablespoon's ideal. I put a little bit less because I'm trying to be healthier. Is there a particular oil that you recommend? Yes, so um, I've put in just vegetable oil. 
Uh, you can go with peanut oil if you want a nuttiness to it. Honestly, there um, vegetable oil is probably the best. In India, some people use mustard oil. Um, these are all very, so peanut oil and mustard oil, are frag, they have fragrances to them. So if you don't want any fragrances, you want a clean oil, just use vegetable oil. Um, otherwise you can use peanut oil. Some people even use sesame oil. I wouldn't recommend it. I don't think it goes with this dish, um, but good question, Daryl. <laughs> Hopefully that, um, that answers that one. Um, all right, let me just have a look here. So that's kind of coming up to the heat now. What I'm gonna do is go in with some mustard seeds. If I can find them, there they are. <laughs> They've gone missing on me in front, and they're right in front of me. So this will start popping really quickly because the idea is to get the mustard seeds, mustard seeds popping as they are doing now. From there, I kind of wanna take it off the heat and let that pop to the side. Um, and then go in with some tomatoes. So I'm gonna go in with um, just, again, we're, we're doing um, pantry food today. So I'm using a tin of crushed tomatoes and that's gonna get really noisy for a little bit. So bear with me. And immediately I'm gonna go in with one teaspoon of salt because Tomatoes and salt, best friends. And um, it's best to cook them when they're hanging out for the first time. I think I've mentioned this before, but when stuff hits the heat, the pores open up and that's when you wanna get the salt in there because it enhances the flavor of whatever it is you're making, in this case, tomato and mustard seeds. All right, so, so far so good. Um, next up, I'm gonna pop a couple of dried chilies in totally optional if you don't like chili or um, rather if you do like chili go go <laughs> go with more than just the two that I'm putting in so I'm going to go in with two um, dried chilies here and I am going to break them up so some of that heat comes out some people uh, like to throw the chilies in but they don't like the seeds so you can actually scrape that out if you if you want um, but we're going to fish those out at the end because we don't want to eat the dried chili uh, but we don't mind a little bit of the seed, so at least Rosh does it. <laughs> so we're gonna let that simmer for a little bit. And so what would normally go in at this stage as well, after we've let that fry for a bit is curry leaves. Um, and that's the curry leaf powder recipe that I shared in the, in the clip before. Again, curry leaves, you do need to have them fresh. So unless it's growing in the garden, um, you, you know, you're not gonna have them available. You could freeze freeze them um, and, and that's okay to, to use. The flavor still comes through, but I don't find that the texture of curry leaves are very good once you've actually frozen them. So, and then there's some people that don't like eating curry leaves, but like, like curry flavor. So the curry powder um, a video that I made actually allows you the, the opportunity to eat curry leaves without eating curry leaves. So at least having that flavor in there, I'm just dropping the fire down a little bit. And so that's that powder here. I'm just gonna use this camera since we have it in front of us. So it's a green um, curry powder, well, it's, it's curry powder, so it's gonna be green because the leaves are green, but it's got a couple of other things in there. It's got um, coriander powder, it's got um, sesame seeds, it's got desiccated coconut, and it's got ginger uh, powder. So it's got some other things in there to round out because curry leaves is quite um, stringent and bitter. And so what we wanna make sure of is that we round that out. So the coconut had, adds creaminess, the sesame seeds adds nuttiness, the coriander adds that floral, um, and the ginger powder actually adds sweetness, oddly enough. Ginger powder is sweet, unlike fresh ginger, which is quite bitter and spicy. So um, that's just gonna simmer for a couple more, for 30 more seconds, and I'm gonna go in with this um, powder. I'm gonna go in with a good amount of it. So I'm going in with, I think a tablespoon's, yes, a tablespoon's worth. So, um, and the reason for that is because um, I wanna give, most of the curry powder is coming, or most of the curry, powder, like you usually use like a madras curry powder or a gold curry powder or anything else, my curry powder is coming from this today. So I'm gonna to use a good amount. So that's half a tablespoon. I'm gonna go in with a full tablespoon's worth. And I'm just gonna let that hang out in there with the tomatoes to really kind of mix in there. Um, and then just bring that heat up slightly and just let that cook. And it's already smelling really nice because it's got all those flavors in there. Um, and yeah, once we're done with those, we've got a couple more spices to go in and then we're going to see that tomato reduction uh, into almost a paste, at which point we'll add the, the soap lent split lentils in. 
and then we will continue cooking. So as I said, one man pot, uh, a one stop shop pot, <laughs> so that I don't have to muss about with lots of extra things. Um, just so you know, a few more things that are going to be going in spice wise is because I don't want to have, I don't want to use garlic. I'm just going to use some garlic powder. And of course, turmeric is best friends with most lentils um, and including the split lentil as well. So I'll add that in. So while that starts to reduce, I'm going to throw in the garlic. So I'm going to go in with half a teaspoon's worth. You can go, it's a, and these are all sort of approximations. If you like garlic flavor, throw more garlic in there. You can even go with two teaspoons. I'm just going to go with the one teaspoon for this um, for today because I feel like something garlicky. Um, and I'm going to go with the same with turmeric. Now, turmeric is a bit tricky because it too much of it introduces a lot of bitterness. So you might want to be careful there. You can always fix that at the end by adding sugar. Um, so if, you, if you're worried about it, or you think you might add it too much. That's usually how you can help fix turmeric um, up to a certain point, more, more, more than a certain point, And then it's unsalvageable. It just becomes a really bitter sort of a dish. So be careful, less is more. You can always add more turmeric at the end if you prefer. Um, as you can see that, that, that paste has gone from sort of a red, dark red to like a, a, a creamy red now. And it's mainly because of those two things uh, going in the garlic and the turmeric. All right, so that's really it for the spices in terms of what goes into the curry. Pretty simple so far, right? Like it's just stuff from the pantry. It's been canned tomatoes. It's been a bunch of powders, some whole spices, the chili and the mustard that is. Um, and I've had the lentils sitting in the pantry. I had a little bit of oil. I had some vegetable stock as well from the pantry. Um, so far, nothing fresh. <laughs> And, and it's smelling pretty good, so there you go. All right, that's almost where I want it to be. I want just a little bit of that water to start to, um, so when I draw an S in there, I want it to stop moving. So I'm just gonna give it a couple more minutes to, to really sort of reduce down. And that's really just to get all that water out because what I wanna have happen next is the, the lentil, split lentils going in. The first thing I wanted to absorb it with heat is that, because that's full of flavor. And that's going to immediately go inside the split lentil. And as a consequence, that's going to make it taste really, really, really tasty. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we'll finish cooking it with more vegetable stock, as well as coconut milk, which is the other thing that we'll be adding in to, to create that gravy sort of a flavor. Oh, texture, rather. So almost there. Yeah. So I'll do that one more time just so you guys can see it, but that's where I want it to be. So it's, as I draw that little sort of S or however you want to call it, it's not closing off as quickly anymore. So that's thumbs up for me for, for the lentils to go in. Um, split lentils that is, um, get my vegetable stock ready. So this is going to go in and it's going to dry up really quickly because there's not a lot of liquid in there, as you can see, it's just a leftover liquid that hasn't been absorbed. And the rest of it is the lentils. So, and these lentils are not even par cooked. They're basically just soaked. So they're gonna need a lot more liquid to cook through. And again, this is where you can have a little bit of fun with it. Some people like them cooked all the way. Some like it so that they get to the point where they're mushy and you can take a blender stick and turn it into a velvety soup, like a pure Indian flavored soup. Uh, some people like them not undercooked, but just kind of a slightly al dente. So you wanna make sure you keep an eye on it if that's how you like your lentils. Um, these lentils cook pretty quickly, relatively speaking, even though they're raw, um, which is again why I like them, because you can have sort of a nice, and this is a vegan dish, and you can have a nice vegan curry that feels creamy um, if, you, if you get it to the point where it's starting to, to be a little bit overcooked, and that's actually quite nice. Susie has asked, hmm. could you use red lentils? You could, uh, just red lentils will take longer to cook. Um, so red lentils, when you split that open, is another split lentil. Um, so with any of um, the options that you pick, if you are picking a, a, a whole lentil as opposed to a split lentil, you definitely want to be soaking it overnight. If you have a pressure cooker, you're more than welcome to use it depending on the lentil. You can check online, but it's usually anywhere between three to 10 minutes to, to cook it. Like chickpeas would be 10 minutes, for example, um, whereas split chickpeas uh, would be 
a fraction of that because it's split open. So same thing. So let, red lentils would be whole. So you would want to make sure that you've allowed enough cooking time for it and give it the support of having soaking it overnight as well. Hopefully that answers that, Susie. But the, but the idea there, uh, just to finish up, is get creative. Use what's in your pantry is what I say. Just if it's not a split lentil, it'll take a, a little longer to cook. So as opposed to what we're doing today. So yeah. All right. I'm liking the look. I'm just going to wait for a little bit more of that liquid to get absorbed. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit more of my... Um, my my leftover vegetable stock. So all up, I'm using a liter's worth because um, half, half a liter went in to uh, soak them. So you can see that that water was, wasn't really much water there. There isn't really any more left. So that's exactly how it should be because <laughs> the lentils need a little bit of water to get cooked. So I'm just gonna keep going in with more um, vegetable stock as I keep Sorry, if they yeah. were using whole red lentils, what hmm. sort of quantity would you recommend? For adding to um, the, the curry, you mean? Yes. Yeah, so I'd still go with, with the recipe today, which I'll post um, a little bit later this week on, on Instagram. Uh, I, I've used a cup's worth. So you could still use a cup's worth there because it doesn't change the quantity um, so much. It's just more the cooking time because of the way it's, 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 it's less processed. So it's more whole. And so that'll just need more time to cook. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> so this is just gonna be me now for a little while, just stirring and uh, talking to you guys. <laughs> so it's gonna get a little bit monotonous uh, until it's not. But basically, we're going to wait for all of that to come up to um, uh, almost uh, almost absorbed. And I haven't finished adding the, the vegetable stock. So I've still got some of that to go in. As you can see, it's starting to bubble. So I want that, that to cook the lentil all the way through before I add coconut milk. And I'm using coconut milk specifically, not coconut cream. Uh, coconut cream's a little bit thicker. If you want a thicker texture, you can. But I think for this curry, given the liquid is gonna help cook, uh, I think coconut milk is better. Um, just, just my personal experience with that. Um, but I know some people really like the coconut cream um, at the end as well, so. Do you have any recommendations for what you could have with this, like a, a paneer or a... Ooh, some a penny, did you say? Something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I'll, I'll quickly show you uh, while this is cooking, but I've made some flatbread. And again, in the spirit of, of um, using stuff from the pantry, I've just um, whipped up some, some uh, flatbread that I've bought from the store. But yes, you can absolutely have this with naan, tandoori roti, just regular roti. I'm just going to flick the camera real quick so you can see this. Um, here we go. So I've just made some roti that I've warmed up and kind of put in a towel. So you can have it with some flatbread like that. Um, smells amazing, actually. Uh, it looks good you, too. <laughs> um, and you can have it with, um, if you like, with some rice. Some people prefer rice. I, I would even, I, I mean, I wouldn't go, like, I like noodles. So I wouldn't mind actually having it with some noodles. So some, some I think you said penne before, Daryl, did you? Uh, or a paneer, I guess, as I'd know it. A uh, paneer, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I thought you said penne like the pasta. I'm like, that's creative. I actually wouldn't, that wouldn't be too bad, I think. Okay, in that case, um, that's what I meant. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> um, but, you know, today I've used the curry powder and um, the dried chilies and the mustard seeds. And I've used red mustard seeds, right? Not um, yellow mustard seeds. Now, if you wanted to completely go, you know what, Rosh, I, I like vegan, I like lentils. Don't know that I like Indian flavors. You could swap out the mustard seeds for yellow mustard seeds. You could go in with, um, what do we use today? You can go in with, um, yeah, you can get rid of turmeric. You can go in with paprika. You can go in with like different flavors. So if, I would say put in there what you like to eat and then, and, you know, just kind of offset it. So paprika is a little bit bitter, um, a little bit sort of smoky. 
depending if you're using smoked paprika. So the coconut milk would, would still complement that really nicely. Um, maybe you don't want to put turmeric powder. Maybe you kind of want to put, I don't know, coriander powder. And then you can maybe put some mixed herbs at the end. You could make it a continental dish and have it with pasta if Indian's not your thing and have it still be vegan and still all from the pantry. So I say, um, get creative. Um, you don't have to follow what I say all the time. <laughs> Um, but that would absolutely go with penne. And especially the garlic powder, that would so go very well with penne. So there you go. And some vegan cheese, if you have that in the fridge. So yeah. Um, but yes, you can have it with bread, rice, noodles, if you wanna get fun, pasta, if you wanna get fun, or just by itself, right? Because if you blend this up and you say, okay, well, I've got, I'm just gonna throw in more vegetable stock. I've got um, you know, enough of a, of, of a hearty soup. I don't really need anything else to go with it, maybe some, 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 some vegetables on the side. And which is what I have. I have um, leftover spinach. I've got some sad looking spinach that I'm actually just gonna throw in and wilt in there, um, you know, just to kind of sad spinach isn't fun to eat fresh. It's a great thing. It's a great way to, to use up rather than throw away vegetables that are still good, but just not in, in its fresh condition. Similarly, if you've got carrots, potatoes, turnips, pumpkin, any of that, uh, I would I would be throwing it now with the vegetable stock so that it cooks together because the lentils take about 20 minutes to cook on the stovetop, which is probably as long as it would take for carrots to cook or at least soften a little bit so you, so you can eat it without sort of crunching on it. So I would just kind of use it as an opportunity to clear out stuff in the fridge that rather than throwing it away, um, you know, turn it into a hearty stew. And yeah, Indian flavors are not Indian flavors. You can definitely have a bit of fun with it going to finish up the rest of that vegetable stock and put it in the recycling. And yeah, there's really nothing else that goes into it except coconut milk. Um, and I'm going to put that in towards the end. Um, I'll probably put the spinach in first because I want to kind of let that the fresh spinach, as you guys know, once you wilt it, water comes out of it. So that water will help cook the lentils and it'll add that flavor as well. Um, if your spinach is a little bit sad, definitely um, wash it first, which I did. Uh, if, if not, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to slowly stir it in and kind of let that mix in there, really. Um, yeah. Were there any other cool questions? I've loved the ones that have come through so far. I could be jumping the gun, but with the coconut milk that you're going to put in, mm should it remain full fat? Well, that, that's the difference between coconut cream and coconut milk. It's just the uh, concentration of fat that's in it. <laughs> so, I have, so I have seen light coconut milk and I'm not sure. Yes, I'm and that's, sure. just, that's just less fat. So you can okay. definitely go with um, coconut light milk. Like I said, um, in this case, the water is gonna help cook the lentils. So it's not a bad thing. Um, yeah, it's, I, I think I would in that way say, um, go with your health. Um, put health first, whichever one you should be eating or eating less of or more of, go with that. But for um, full fat if you want taste. Full fat if you want taste, yeah, for sure. Coconut milk though. Coconut cream if you really want the, the, the creamy texture of it, go for Might that. Might not be so good for the health, but healthy not for the so soul. That's so good for the health, that's it. It's good for the soul, very good for the soul, that's it. Um, but yeah, honestly, it, it comes back down to what you have. And sometimes I don't always put all the coconut milk that I have in, just because I'm looking at it and it looks like it's got a lot of water because what we have to be mindful of is we want it to cook all the way through um, for the lentils, but we don't want to put too much water in there that we keep needing to boil it. And then that makes it, you know, kind of over overcooked lentils and too much water. So as you saw, even with vegetable stock, I didn't throw it all in at once. I kind of gradually I'm watching the lentils as they cook and I'm adding it as I go. Same thing with the coconut milk. And you can always reserve a little bit at the end. If you're having friends over, you can put that on top, like a little bit of a dollop and make a design look really fancy and professional. So you can definitely do that at the end as well or have it, have it on standby in case someone does find it spicy and then you've got coconut milk to help them with sort of the spice level as well. So there's lots of different ways to, to think about it. But yeah, don't go throwing everything in, particularly if you're not sure or don't know which coconut milk you have to Daryl's point, if you want the creamy versus the, the not so uh, creamy version. That's a great way to play around with it. Um, and the other thing I didn't uh, mention uh, was that this, this is a really dark lentil curry. That color is going to change 
so it's actually dark now because you probably go, no, Rash, it's not that dark. And yes, it, it, it is dark relative to how it'll look at the end because we're gonna put coconut milk in. So it's gonna actually change uh, quite a bit. So to be say devil's advocate. There? Say that again? To be devil's advocate. Mm. Go why for not, it. Why not coconut cream? Why not coconut cream? Cream, yeah. Yeah, just uh, in this case, um, when I've made it with coconut cream before, it was too thick and it actually didn't help the lentils cook. Because part of it is that the coconut milk the coconut milk is a liquid, which means it's going to yep. help the lentils cook, which means that you want it to be at a, at a um, what's the word I'm looking for, at a liquid enough rate so that the lentils can absorb it. If you go in with a, a, just a pure cream, it's too thick, and then it'll just kind of sit next to the lentils instead of yeah, getting into the lentils. Yeah, so it will actually the affect lentils. the cooking process. That's it, yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and if you have cream, you can always mix it with a bit of water, shake it up, and then throw it in, as opposed to just um, uh, just a thick liquid. So, yeah. But yes, good job playing devil's advocate. <laughs> All right, those lentils are still not cooked. And I know that because they're kind of hanging out and they're separated, like they're not really sort of sticking together. Um, and they'll go from being that way to being like cooked really fast. Like it just happens in a heartbeat. So you do have to pay attention to it. Um, and, and again, pick it up with a spoon and take like kind of give it a bit of a, a taste and, and a chew and, and decide for yourself what level you want it at. You don't want it undercooked, but you know, if you want it al dente, then you might want to stop the cooking process a little bit earlier. Um, the good news is if you end up overcooking them and it's a complete disaster by your definition because it's overcooked, you can always just blend it, right? Because <laughs> when it's that soft, it's easy to blend. And that way you have like, you have a really fancy velvety soup now instead of overcooked lentils. <laughs> because you can't tell the difference when it's been blended. So you always have that as a fallback. A little bit of tomato left in there. That's going for recycling. Um, I want to cook it just a wee bit more. And then um, I'm going to go in with the coconut milk. What I'm also doing now um, is I'm identifying four pieces of chili that I had thrown in at the beginning, because I do intend on taking them out. You especially want to take it out if you are blending, because if you blend all that chili in there, it's gonna become spicy, uh, unless that's what you want. Uh, but if you don't, then make sure you fish it out um, before the end. Uh, but yes, I'm just putting it to the corner so I know where I need to go to pick them up. Um, but other than that, it's gonna get ready for, there he is, I was looking for number four. Um, <laughs> for that, once, once I've done that, we can get ready to throw the coconut milk in. And that should be, that should be really cool, um, I'll do it. Um, make sure you guys are watching because it's going to change the color. It's going to be fun. I like when colors change because it's all science and chemistry. But yeah, I would say we're ready for some coconut milk to go and I'm going to go in with half. Do you recommend to add onions? Yeah, Susie, that, that's great. I didn't have any onions today. And also in the spirit of just going straight into the pantry. But if you've got onions, um, I would use brown onions if you have them. Of course, you can use red as well, but red are just a little bit sweeter. Um, I put them in at the start. So when you were, when I was frying up the um, mustard seeds before the tomatoes went in, that's when I put the onions in. And you want to fry it down until it's about sort of softened, kind of uh, caramelized. If, if it, it, because when the mustard seeds went in, the oil was really hot. So that's the best time to throw the onions in. They'll caramelize a little bit and they'll go translucent. Um, I would cut them however you like. Some people like to slice them sort of um, lengthways. Some people like to dice them all the way through, whichever you prefer. Um, I like having it a bit of length in there because in, in this case, it would go really well and tie up with the spinach as you eat it and give good texture but definitely onions and garlic as well. I use garlic powder in the spirit of being pantry, um, uh, having my pantry supply, but going fresh garlic as well. Um, but yeah, there you go. And I didn't do ginger um, because I've got ginger powder in the curry leaf powder that I made. Um, but yeah, ginger is definitely something that goes very well with lentils because they help with digestion. So you can definitely throw some ginger in as well. So the root vegetables, the aromatics, if you like, are always good to throw into any curry. Um, if you have them, but again, here I've just used the powdered versions of garlic and ginger specifically, uh, but no onion, although well, you can always add that. Look, that's, that's coming along pretty well. As you can see, that's not fully cooked, but that's, that's probably al dente now. So you can see that it's starting to kind of break open a little bit, but it's not completely squished. Um, I haven't gone in with, I've barely gone in with 
less than half. I might actually take it up to half. And because I think um, I've, this is the first time I'm making it with the spinach and there was enough water in the spinach that kind of came out as I cooked it, there was enough liquid in there to cook the lentils. Now, if you like a soupy lentil and you wanna throw more coconut milk in there, go for your life, right? <laughs> um, there, there is no wrong way to do this. I think it's more about personal preference and making sure that the flavors are good. One of the other things that I recommend adding is sugar, but I would only add it if you want it. So for example, maybe as I mentioned before, maybe you had put a little bit too much turmeric, didn't realize it until the end, or um, maybe it's a little bit too bitter for your liking with the curry powder. Um, just a little bit of sugar will, will help take the edge off uh, or coconut milk, more coconut milk uh, to, to add to it. But that's really, honestly, almost it. I'm just gonna go in with a spoon to give it a quick taste um, to make sure it's cooked all the way through because that's the most important thing, um, it, it, which it looks like it is, but I'm just gonna double check. That's al dente. So I like it cooked a little bit more, so I'm gonna keep that going. But that's cooked all the way through. So, and I think that was probably about just shy 20 minutes of, of, of just kind of simmering, adding vegetable stock, coconut milk gradually with the spinach as well. And it's almost all the way through. Um, yeah, if you like a little bit of, I wouldn't say bite, but just a little bit of, of, of um, just that kind of, not even crunch. I actually, I would say bite rather than crunch. Then, then I'd switch off the fire now. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't know that until I tried it. So you just got to keep kind of, uh, trying it for texture. The other thing I tasted in there was the flavors. And for me, it doesn't need sugar. There's enough salt that went in at the beginning along with what was in the vegetable stock and it's beautiful. The coconut milk's taken the edge off some of the spices, the mustard seeds, the uh, curry leaf powder and all of that and the turmeric as well. It's just nicely sort of hanging out in the background. Uh, the flavors are perfect for me, but always give it a taste, make sure before you serve it up to anyone else that it is tasting, tasting like you want it to taste. So <laughs> there you go. Well, if you guys are paying attention, you'll see now that that really quickly went from being sort of a creamier look now, as opposed to where it was just a couple of minutes ago. So that happened in just a couple of minutes. It's gone from al dente to kind of cook through if you like. And that's how I like it. So I'm going to drop the heat and kind of just keep it on a slow simmer and um, serve it up shortly. But as you can see, and even, um, even though the fire is still going, even once I've switched off the fire, um, the, the protein in the lentils actually, I mean, I, what I usually do when I need vegan cream is I actually cook this in water and salt and I blend it because it has a creamy texture. And I say all that because once you've switched off the fire and you've just left it on the stove, a lot of that water will come out in the steam and it'll thicken even more. So even though it's still um, a, a lentil curry, it hasn't been uh, blended into a soup, it's still gonna have that really thick, rich, creamy flavor, combination of the coconut, um, coconut cream or milk, and also a combination of the, just the split lentils getting cooked all the way through and adding to that um, texture in the curry. So bit of prettiness to it. I'm just gonna go in there with some of that coconut milk and just kind of not do very much more than that and just pull it. Yeah, mix it in with the tomatoes so you can see the difference. And have that served up just about. with some flat bread on the side. And voila, vegan lazy person's split lentil curry with flatbread from the pantry 